What's up, y'all? Sorry about the whole black and white thing, you know? I was just getting a ride in a DeLorean and uh, just taking a little taking a little drive, taking a little joy ride, and then happened to notice that it was a time machine that took me back to 55. And I just ended up in this suit that I couldn't even afford. And now, here I am having to do the review from 55, which surprisingly is very good Wi-Fi. But anyway, if you are new, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the YouTube channel on Starling on Cinemas, and that's Cinemas with the Ness. And if you're watching this on Instagram, we had Instagram back in 1955, only we didn't call it Instagram, but we just called it something else. Today we'll be giving you our we'll be giving you our report on Back to the Future as part of the Way Back Wednesday series. This will be the new franchise we are going to cover back in 1955. So let's get started, shall we? So here is everything that occurred. In the 1980s sci-fi classic, Small Town, California teen Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, is thrown back into 1955 when an experiment by his eccentric scientist friend, Dr. Emmett Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd, goes out of hand. Traveling through a time in a modified DeLorean car, Marty encounters young versions of his parents, played by Crispin Glover and Leah Thompson, and must make sure that they fall in love or he'll cease to exist. Even more dauntingly, Marty has to return to his own time and save the life of Doc Brown. Now, Back to the Future is certainly a franchise that lives up to his name, lives up to his purpose. It causes everyone who watches it to go back to watch it in the future, to go back to it in the future. The story expresses a very solid narrative where literally almost every plot detail explains itself. Whether it is for the sake of the plot or just helping the audience understand why certain things in the movie are the way they are. I'll explain that much later. One of my favorite things about this movie is how they used time travel to feed people's curiosity. In science fiction, we tend to ask, or at least science in general, we tend to ask these endless questions about the what, the why, the when, and the how of these types of concepts. In spite of having some of the important questions about time travel answered in the sequel, like the big questions about how it will affect the space-time continuum, viewers could only handle a certain amount of revelation at a time. We get some of the basic information about this version of time travel through the DeLorean, like the plutonium and the flux capacitor, which in the words of Dr. Emmett Brown, that is the central element that makes time travel possible. Aside from the time, time travel aspect, that helped it to make its mark in pop culture. It has been said that Back to the Future is pretty much everything else, like the coming of age romance, the high school comedy, the action and adventure vibes, and the mystery thriller of what would take for them to get back to the future, or at least what it would take for Marty to get back to the future and whether he will be trapped in this time period or not. The most interesting things about the characters, with well, the most interesting things when you watch it for the first time are the dilemmas we see the protagonists go through as well as the characters. This proves my point about how certain things, certain aspects, explain itself visually after explaining itself verbally. We get a taste of certain characters in the opening act so we can understand it in 1955 and that it has been going long and strong ever since. For example, it was said that George McFly and Lorraine Bates met with George being hit by a car and we get a hilarious twist to that when Marty travels back in time and gets hit instead. Marty being the one to go back in time with Doc feels fitting because in the beginning we see Marty with the passion for music, for rock and roll, but everything else around him is black and white. Everything else around him is black and white. But what better way to add some color to your personal world than to go back to the black and white era of 1955? The characters and their situations are mostly the source of the comedy in the film with George McFly's awkwardness playing off of Biff Tannen's provocative nature. Yeah, uh, hello, hello, anybody home, huh? Think, McFly, think. I had to go in with this review and now you just want to interrupt it every time. Or Marty McFly accidentally becoming Lorraine's sudden love interest, which not to mention, if you think about it, it's incest. There's incest involved in the movie, which I never thought of because I was just looking at... I was just looking at Marty's role of being the supposedly George McFly instead of what happened 
now he's now he's making out with his own mom, which yeah, it is it's pretty much in incest. Anyway, the biggest issue here in the plot is that that does not involve time travel is trying to reap the thread that was torn by Marty, which culminates in one of the best music performances in a movie today. Go on, Johnny, go, go, go. Go on, Johnny, go, go. Go on, Johnny, go, go, go. Johnny, be good. The Back to the Future Part 1 currently holds a 96% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Back to the Future is a cult favorite that simply stands the test of time, no pun intended, with its mind-blowing story, priceless comedy, and popular value that it holds. So for that, I will give Back to the Future Part 1 9.5 SOs out of 10. And th this is this is the review. This is the review, guys. This is the franchise. This is like that throwback franchise that I that I decided to start. Cause you know, I'm I'm doing all the basics. I'm coming on the basics. Like that is my pattern. I told y'all the pattern. I do the franchise, then I do any other throw any throwback. It doesn't have to have a sequel. It could just be a throwback that stood on its own with nothing following it. So the next two weeks, I'll be reviewing Back to the Future Part 2 and Back to the Future Part 3. And then I will, I will never tell you what throwback I'm doing in between the end of one franchise and the start of another. But y'all will see that. And then when I start the next franchise, critiquing the next franchise, y'all will see that. But I hope, I, I'm, I guess, I hope y'all love what my system is here with the whole Way Back Wednesday. I personally like Way Back Wednesday. Because this is probably the only... The only playlist that will stay stay existing forever, like go on for as long as this channel is alive, for as long as I am alive. <laughs> but anyway, that is the end of the Back to the Future review. Y'all can let me know what y'all think of this cult classic in the comments down there. And I'll see you guys next week in 1985. Bye.